So here we have a bag that, um, it was an applique project that I did, and I like blanks, this um, black bag with the strap on. This you can get like for, um, let's just say five bucks or so or less. And I like bags like this because I can do samples with this and not necessarily have to make a bag. So it's easy, it's quick. The, um, the feather that we're going to be painting on using the paintwork tool, um, I could certainly put the bag as is on the hoop. Um, I could either use the new hoop where um, it has the clamp on the inner hoop so it hangs off the edge like such, or if I'm going to use a traditional hoop such as this, um, this large oval hoop, I would need to put the, uh, the outer hoop inside the bag and then on the bottom I would simply cut a slit so that this mechanism can be put onto the embroidery arm. The issue with this particular bag is the design needs the large oval hoop and when I'm putting it um, in the bag without it being opened up, let me just kind of get in here, um, you can see that it, it will fit but it's, it's t tight. You know, so I wouldn't be able to get the embroidery arm in there so it could move around. So I would either need to shrink the design down and go to, say, the medium hoop, and then this strategy of just the one seam would certainly hold true. What I'm going to elect to do, however, is I'm going to take the blank apart, and I do that by cutting off the strap. And you can... You won't be able to see because it's black and black thread. Sorry about that. But there's you know, your typical box stitching here that you need to take out. And then you need to take apart the one side seam here. And then this will open up flat. I want to tell you, um, there's a lot of different tools that you can use with this. One of them, of course, and let me see if I can zoom in here just a bit. One of them, of course, is your traditional um, seam ripper. Uh, that's certainly an option. This I like to do <coughs> if I need to pick out a couple of stitches. But if I'm doing something like taking apart, again, this side piece here where the strap attaches, then I like a seam ripper like this, which some of you may not have seen. <coughs> this is a um, Ulfa rotary point cutter. And it has a blade here that's like a quarter of a rotary cutter. And this works pretty well as far as just simply coming in here and taking apart the stitches. Yet uh, another type of tool, let me just kind of line these up here, your traditional cutter, your half of a rotary cutter. This is a uh, Ginger um, seam ripper. And these guys, <clears throat> there's like a curved blade on it. This is not the sharp edge. The sharp edge is on this side. So when I'm using this, I'm in essence taking the side seam in this manner and coming it through. And it really does cut those side seams like butter. So just so you know, uh, there's several different options you could uh, use. Something like this, you um, unscrew this and you pull this blade back into its housing, a real safe thing to do as opposed to leaving any rotator cuff, uh, rotator cuff. <laughs> Um, no rotator cuff injuries, any uh, rotary blade open because that would be that that would be bad, similar to like a, you know, a type of safety mechanism like this. If I'm using a rotary cutter, uh, I really like these squeeze handles so that when I let go of it, the blade's not exposed. So consider that when you're in the market for another rotary cutter. So what I've done off camera is I prepared the bag to do the stitching. And so here you'll have just this big black blob until I back out a bit. Here you have the bag and I took apart the side seam here just to the bottom and I took off the strap and this strap for my for my uses this is a little too long so you can also shorten the strap which is kind of nice to whatever size that you need but what will happen in essence um, you'll be putting this on the machine so that You'll see it on the machine, but I just want to show you how I mounted this. <clears throat> you can put this on like such, and then you put your inner hoop like so, and then you're good. Now we're using a paint a paint tool, 
So a pay tool does not necessarily need stabilization per se. It needs to be hooped well and I would certainly use like the single hole stitch plate on the machine just to support it from below. There is no harm uh, using a stabilizer on the inside you know like like you would traditionally use but because again there's no stitching um, you can just keep reusing that same piece of stabilizer. The other thing is if you were using a stabilizer that had an adhesive to it if it's a good strong adhesive I could certainly take this lay it in the lay it on the hoop again the stabilizers inside here I lay this on top right side up of course I adhere it to the stabilizer and then that would be another way and then the pen would simply go over the fabric like such if the adhesive is nice and strong I would certainly just leave it at that if I'm questioning whether or not that fabric might start migrating in the hoop I could either hoop it like you traditionally would or I can use the basting box that's on the machine or design one in Design Works where it'll first stitch a basting box to help connect the stabilizer to the project and then there won't be any issue with the um, material migrating on the hoop when the friction of the pen rubbing against it could potentially shift it. Uh, if I'm working with things like sweater knits for instance <clears throat> those are things that really need to be well stabilized with a good adhesive to it because when that pen comes down on the fabric and begins to move you can certainly get what's called like a plowing effect where the fabric literally kind of pushes or molds away from the pen which you wouldn't want to have happen so a good adhesive with knit fabric but this is a woven so it's not going to be as much of an issue the um, the paintwork tool um, comes in the nifty little box let me zoom in here just a bit and there is in essence uh, four adapters here uh, number one is the largest two three and four the numbers are kind of written in black or you probably won't be able to see it on the video but that's okay they get subsequently smaller this is the mechanism itself uh, important to note is this guard when it comes down it helps us set the depth of how far the nib of the pen should come to. The nib should always touch the guard. You lift the guard up out of place and then you can begin to um, to uh, paint. Um, the, the thing that you got to be careful with is just don't insert the pen without that guard being there because again it helps us set how far down in the unit this pen needs to do in order so that when it's working it's magic the nib actually hits the fabric. If you find that you need, say, a little lighter or a little darker, uh, as far as thicker or thinner, that's where this little guy comes in handy. And so as I'm backing it off, it's going to come in harder onto the fabric. And if I come up like such, it comes on shallower onto the fabric. So you can help set the depth this way as well. It's kind of a fine tune. The pen that I want to use is uh, this white clover pen because it's on black fabric and I really think that this gives a very dramatic effect. When you're ready to start using it you need to try out, it's kind of like the three bears, you know, it's too little, too much, just right. Like number four, that's the smallest one, that's a, that's a non-starter, it's not even going in there. If I go to number one, that's going to just let the pen fall all the way out, which is not cool. If I come into number two, that does a pretty good job. It does let the pen fall through, but with the mechanism it will, when you close this, it squeezes down on that little black thing that I was holding. So it's going to be a little bit um, um, snugged in, shall we say. <clears throat> if I go to number three, number three, it starts to let me come in but I can't go further than, than this and this is not going to let the depth of the pen reach that little red guard that I was just describing. I could of course take a pen and come in it to, from the other way and this might be advantageous for this particular pen if this indeed would fit into the mechanism. But as you can see, even with this mechanism open, it's pretty much a tight fit and I don't want to force this, but just remember <clears throat> this particular pen, for instance, it's 
sorry, it's tapered. So it starts kind of narrow and it gets thicker here. So sometimes, as I just mentioned, you could come in from the bottom and see if that will snug in. In this case, what I think I'm going to do is I want to go one step larger, which will be number two, because that allows the pen to migrate all the way through. If I put it into, this guard goes into the pen mechanism, not foot num number 93, like so. And when I put this in, you can kind of see it's not just falling through. So that, that's actually a potential good fit, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to close it down. So that's the tightest it will go. So what I do before I put this on the machine, before I start boogieing with fabric, I take the guard out of the way and then I'm going to push up. And you can see just by putting a little bit of pressure here, that started to migrate up. That's going to be a non-starter. So what do you do when, when the one is a little too tight, the one's just a little too loose? How do you migrate or how do you solve this? <clears throat> and for your viewing pleasure, <laughs> I have this piece of bandaging tape. It's kind of a white rubberized uh, tape. We use this oftentimes, like if you get lab work done, uh, we'll oftentimes put like a Band-Aid on you just because we're nice that way. And, and then we'll put this, it's kind of like a compression bandage. That's what this was originally for. It sticks to itself, which is like really cool. So I use this type of tape. It comes in different colors. You can get hot pink, you can get blue, you can get purple, the sky's the limit, the rainbow colors, absolutely. Uh, I use this tape also, by the way, to put along the side of a hoop if I have something that's very, very slippery. Uh, so that's another kind of uh, game changer here. This, by the way, is a product that's called Hoop Grip. This stuff really needs to be replaced. It's just a rubber tape that you just peel off and you put another piece on. But uh, I'm not going to do that for today. Hoop Grip is just, again, rubberized tape. It's about a quarter of an inch, and it fits on most inner hoops. It's always the inner hoop that you put this on. So where am I going with this? I need to make this barrel not so slick. It needs to have a little more teeth to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a little piece of this tape. I'm using my little rotary cutter here just to cut a little piece of tape off. And then I'm going to just kind of put this kind of at an angle here, and I'm just going to roll this up on the barrel. Roll out the barrel. So I've got something kind of like this, right? So again, it's kind of rubberized now. It's going to give me a little bit more grip with this tool. So I'm going to take this now. This is open. I'm going to stick this little guy in through. I want to make sure that this comes down to the red guard, which it does. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now when I push up on this, this is snug. It's not going to be pushing up this way. So again, that little rubberized tape, just making sure the nib is all the way down and you can fine tune it here. That's exactly what I wanted to show you specifically with the bag preparation and the tool. Now let's go over to the machine and I'll show you how this goes into uh, work. So here we have the, uh, the screen of my machine. I'm just pointing out a couple of things. Um, first of all, again, a straight stitch plate I have on for better support. I did not put stabilizer in here. I just hooped the woven fabric tighter. If it was a knit, I would use stabilizer and adhesive one at that and hoop. Um, and also probably a basting box. Um, just wanted you to know that I did ask for the machine to have foot 93 on. Uh, and so that is on. And I also, um, it saw that it was the large oval that this was uh, programmed for. Uh, I will tell you that when I first brought this design in, it uh, I digitized it in the large oval, but it was bringing in this midi hoop. <clears throat> um, so this is what I initially saw, and I want it to be the large oval. <clears throat> So, um, because again, the midi would be even larger. So for that bag, it would be even tighter than what I had shown. So the first thing I did is I corrected. I have the large oval hoop on, so I'm gonna come over here to the large oval, select the large oval. When I did that, I'm gonna just close out of here. When I did that, you can see that there is now a red border around the design, which means the design is not all in the hoop. It will still allow me to paint this out. It will just skip over anything that it says is illegal or outside the stitching boundary. I did tell the machine 
because we're using the design work software that I'm using foot 93 foot 93 as you're going to see or you saw in the previous part of the video but it's a big honker foot so the legal area is even shrunk down even more but you can see foot 93 is absolutely here this again is my editing function what I'm going to tell you next is very important so listen up on any design works tool uh, design. I don't care if it's paint, crystal, or cut work. When I go into my ability to change or uh, manipulate it in the machine, the only thing, the only thing that I'm allowed to do is to, um, to reposition either on the X or the Y. I cannot rotate the design. I cannot flip the design. Um, I can't turn it 90 degrees. Nothing like that. Nothing on the machine. The only thing I can do once again is to uh, reposition on an XY coordinate to get things back in the hoop, to get things lined up. But again, no rotation. All of that has to be done. All of that has to be done in the design work software. So even your hoop orientation is very important. I wanted the, this particular orientation because it would put the mechanism to orient the design this way to either the uh, west or east side of the bag and then I would have cut the slit in the bottom as I'd mentioned and then stitch it out in this orientation. So I'm going to take this design and I just need to shimmy it to the right just a little bit and I'm just going to shimmy till that red area goes away. Whoops, I'm doing the wrong one. Let's see. I'm going to so I was doing the wrong one to go left, right. It's the zigzag. So let me just put it back into the center. It's centered again. I'm taking this one, just moving it over slightly. You see how the red halo went away from the hoop. So we're good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that out of here. And so that's my editing. I'm going to go down to my, um, my stitching. And you can see it's asking for the default. It's a paint uh, tool. It's black. Uh, and that's all that it knows. So I'm going to come back down here where you'll see the bag here is hooped. You'll see the red guard is in place. I'm going to go ahead and take the red guard out of the position so it's going to be ready to stitch. But what I might need to do is I might need to change the depth of the pen with that sliding dial and I don't know that until I know that and a couple of ways that you can um, test is you could certainly do like a little preliminary like say just on the stabilizer not on the fabric you know to check for the depth you could also take a little piece of um, of tape you know put a little piece of tape down there to check the depth I generally just go for it um, and then I'll adjust and if it's like either too light or too heavy it's more than likely going to be too light if anything, then all I have to do is back up in the design. So I have all of this set up. This is the guard is out of the way once again. The bag is not tucked underneath the hoop. Everything is out of the field that needs to be out of the field. I'm just going to push my start button and it will begin to work its magic. And I will say thus far I'm not impressed. There's no magic happening. So I'm going to come back up to the screen and I'm going to come here. It looks like a snake with an X and I'm just going to tell it I want you to go back to the beginning of the design. Okay, So it's at the beginning of the design. Coming back here. I'm going to go ahead and bring the depth of this down a bit. And let's try this again. And now we're getting marking, which is good. And you can kind of see how it's marking. I generally am not going to go super fast with this. It is what it is. Um, there's like an, an X you might be seeing here that's done in chalk. This little X here is done in chalk. That was just to help me align things up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera and complete this design and we'll come back. 
So I brought you back on camera because when I initially was doing the project, I did notice that I was getting some plowing. The this this is kind of like a ballpoint pen. It's not like a felt tip pen that we would normally use, like the Edding pens. So it was it was catching the weave of the fabric and plowing it more than I wanted. So I did take a little bit of um, not a little but an appropriate amount of sticky stabilizer to the back of the project. And as you can see, it's now continuing to do the stitching, uh, and we're not having um, any issues with the um, with the ink flow. It's not plowing anymore. Uh, you can see that it can do the drawing relatively quickly. Um, so I'm going to let you enjoy the spectacle for a little bit more uh, because I do think it's very cool. This pen initially, this contraption came out. I'm going to say it was like 20. 14, somewhere in that range. It was in Washington, D.C., uh, where they had the Bernina uh, Convention. And so these are dealers from all across the United States that come in. And we saw this uh, pen in action on the embroidery unit. This is not thread. This is ink. And uh, you could hear a pin drop in the room because everyone knew that this was going to really reinvigorate uh, people becoming even more interested in what these embroidery machines can do. So this is something that is very unique to the Bernina line of the machines. And although I love all machines, I teach all different brands of machines, I do uh, appreciate the ingenuity that Bernina comes out with in reinventing what an embroidery unit can do. So I'm going to let this continue doing what it needs to do and then uh, we'll be back and I'll show you the completed design. So um, here we have the, um, the bag is now off the hoop. I will have sewn up the side here. I will re have, have reattached the, um, the strap there. And you can see using that white pen, it was kind of effective. It's kind of a cool look uh, on black. Um, you can certainly um, take a bag like this and put um, other samples of design works, what have you. One thing to consider is if you wanted to put something on uh, black, um, some of the metallic pens show up on black fabric. You'd need to test. But the other thing you could certainly do is you could take um, something that, uh, let me just grab something here. It's a different project. I'm going to flip this around. But say if, if you did something where you were um, putting something on, the, on a different piece of fabric. Um, this is just a painted design. Um, you could certainly now take this and applique this onto the um, onto the black bag. So that would be another way of putting Design Works decorations on a black bag. And and you've seen this sample before, but uh, some of you are relatively new to the Design Works. Uh, and this is just an example of combining. Uh, these are rhinestones uh, and embroidery. So uh, lots of different things you can do with these little blanks and I um, suggest that, that you try a couple of them out.